Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Regularly Scheduled Hostility. Hey everybody, welcome back to a special edition of Regularly Scheduled Hostilities. I'm joined as always by the Wednesday night champion, Yvonne yep. DeBoard, and we are once again joined by the man they call Dave from the Working Fans <laughs> Podcast. How you doing, Dave? Good, man. Good to be back. Your boy's already showing you support. There's Joe. What's up, Joe? Yep. Hey, Producer thank you, Joe. Joe from Working Fans. Uh, as you guys can see, Chuck is not here. It's New Year's. People have things to do. So Dave has graciously mm-hmm. is filling in for Chuck. I'll get... I'm used to Chuck like doing this whole intro, so like it's throwing me off. So I apologize. But dude, appreciate you coming on. Yeah. It's no the problem. end of the year. 2020 is thankfully almost over. We have another day and a half or so. So what do we have? Under 48 hours. Yeah. So we're getting there. We got another day and a half. We had some very unfortunate news the other day, which we'll get to in a second. But before we get there, I want to thank manscaped.com. Um, I got to use that soon. My face, I look homeless. I need to get it together. I use promo code RSH2020. It's going to be on the bottom of the screen this whole episode. Check them out. They got everything you need. You see Dave rocking the shirt. Cool shirts. Great products. Check out this promo from them, and we will be right back. Sir, manscaped.com. Like I said, promo code will be un- going down on the ticker the whole episode. Make sure to check them out. All right, Dave. Sad yeah. news this week. We lost a good one, man. <clears throat> Age of 41 years old. Mm. Uh, as of now, lung issues. I mean, we're not really going to dig into that. There's no reason for that. But Luke Harper, John Hoover, Brody Lee, however you know him, mm-hmm. he's passed away. AEW tonight will do a tribute show. They've moved their New Year's Eve. I think it's New Year's Eve bash or something back a couple yep. weeks. Uh, Brody Lee's eight-year-old son actually booked this show. You'll see diff- different members of uh, the Dark Order teaming with matches. They're actually matches that his son has always wanted to see. So you're going to see 10 team with Cody and Orange Cassidy. You're going to see some teams that don't make logical sense in the landscape of heel, babyface, but these kind of things are bigger than professional wrestling. It's about coming together as a community, supporting everybody, you see Xavier Woods on Twitter today yeah, advertising the AEW show, which, you know, and everybody's like, Vince McMahon's a prick. To a point, he is. But this is not the time for any of that stuff. Ratings mean nothing. Right now. Uh, start with you, Dave. Yeah. What are some of your favorite moments of the man they call Luke Harper, Brody Lee, and his wife and kids called John Huber? Uh, a couple moments. Um, well, first off, too, one other thing I found out today on one of the podcasts I listened to um, – <clears throat> Tony Schiavone was talking about they actually have already signed Brody Lee's son uh, mm-hmm. to a contract. So when he's old enough, they will start training him. And, That's awesome. That yeah. is awesome. Absolutely. So, super cool. Uh, now, uh, memories of Brody, uh, you know, working backwards, uh, you know, starting AEW first. I, I really enjoyed the moment where he just uh, annihilated Cody for the TV title. It came out of nowhere. It was shocking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was done in a squash. It was a Saturday night uh, dynamite, I remember. And I just remember, I think NXT was on that same night for a takeover. And we yeah. were watching those up. And I remember watching that. And I'm like, this is insane. Like, I turned away. And I'm like, he just, he mauled him. He never saw anything like that. So, no, that was- we didn't think. The way the way Cody's view in AEW, that doesn't happen, ever. Right. So, they went out of their way to really put him over big. And I was happy to see it. Um, I liked a lot of the skits he was doing. With John Silver, I thought they had great chemistry together. Um, as far as like his days in the WWE, I really enjoyed the initial run when he came in with the Wyatt family, and they had built up the Shield and the Wyatt family for like almost a year, 
and then they had that six man match. I want to say it was like 2014, and mm-hmm. the crowd was just ready for it. The Shield yes. were going to be baby Absolutely. faces, but they weren't quite yet. And both, you know, it's just, I remember I just watched a little bit of it before I came on just to remember, and it was like the crowd was chanting, This is awesome before the match even started. Uh, Ambrose and Wyatt Brong in the crowd, and then it was just that was some of the stuff I really loved, you know, that he was involved in back then. Yeah, that was my moment. That's what um, I watched earlier today when I was actually at work. Where at work, I'm just there. I don't know why. I'm just there. They're like, you have to be here. But I, t- I put that on the network on my phone, and the crowd, like you said, they were so ready. Mm-hmm. Like, they knew. Like, this is a huge deal. Like, this is the Shield. This is the Wyatt. This is the Elimination Chamber. Like, the crowd was so hot. Like, that's what misses with wrestling now is no crowd. Right. Like, the crowd can make the most insignificant thing mean something. But uh, the thing we were talking before we came on about uh, Brody, Luke, whatever you know him as, most people know him as Luke Harper. He's more popular from his WWE days. He's a good dude. You see on social media, everybody's posting stuff yeah. about him. I wrote something you know, to kind of try to help unite the internet wrestling community, which is absolutely putrid as far yeah. as on social media. Mm-hmm. People are just attacking each other. They are. Me included. Me and Chuck. Are re- Yvonne's the nice one. Me and Chuck are really bad at that as well. We're going to try to get better. But he's a universally loved guy. I like the little tribute they did on Raw. Mm -hmm. AEW's doing a whole show. I will be watching that. As you guys that follow the show, I never watch AEW. I'm I'm actually considering watching that before NXT, which never happens either. I mean, it's one of those kind of things. Good dude who has taken up from us too soon. And I really hope this makes Vince McMahon reconsider the way he does these wrestlers that he doesn't have anything for because mm-hmm. you can literally say that Luke Harper's career was wasted about seven or eight months. Absolutely. Where yeah. they just kept him under contract. So he couldn't go nowhere else. And then, cause you never know when it's truly going to be your last day and life's too short to be I'm not saying that he's evil. I understand why he did it, but there's no reason for it. And yeah. I hope everybody can learn and take something positive from such a bad situation. But the kid getting the contract is fantastic. And I, I'm pretty excited for this show tonight. I think AEW is going to do something really cool for him. And they're actually working on, WWE's working on a production for him that you'll probably see on the network some point in the next week or two as well. That's awesome. I have one thing to follow up too is that um, it's just, like you talked about the wrestling community, it's so toxic. And this was one of the mm-hmm. few times where, you, especially initially on Saturday and Sunday, we saw so much positivity yes. where everybody just came out from all promotions because he had been in AEW, WWE, the Indies, and everybody just mm-hmm. really rallied uh, behind us. And that's where we found out, like, you know, like we know him as like we're fans, but then you're mm-hmm. seeing like his peers, his friends, and you're like, wow, you know, and it, it starts to hit home. Like, I definitely like. I won't lie. Like, I got choked up a few times reading some of the stuff, like that Bray wrote and everything. I'm like, yeah. well, this was his lifelong yeah, the, friend. Bray Wyatt took it hard. Yeah, the impact that he had on Bray specifically. Yeah. Like, as, as you know, like the little things in AW. So, like, I know you're a diehard wrestling fan like us. So I know you noticed that he's using some of Bray's moves. Like, mm-hmm. he's he was using little things that Bray does mm-hmm. and kind of tribute. Like, you see the toxic people on the internet. Oh, my God, he stole Bray's. It's like, no, man. That doesn't. Like, matter. they're like best, like family. Like, Wyatt yeah, family right. was a family thing. Yeah. Yes, Joe, I will be watching tonight. First or second, I'm not sure. It will, de- I'll be watching both. I, I get to we'll work from home tomorrow, that. so I can stay <laughs> up and watch both. Couple of moments I like a uh, I'll start with Luke Harper. I've been a fan of him. Um, him and Eric Ronan was in Bludgeon Brothers. And I always loved that team. I like the Wyatt family, but you take Eric Ronan and Luke Harper out of there, they were dominant together. They actually became tag champions. It was at WrestleMania. We've 30. seen them a few times live. live as well. And they are more scary live than on TV. WrestleMania 34, they fought the Usos and the New Day in a triple threat um, match for the titles, and they won together. Um, their first ever title they've won together individually and as a team. They actually weren't even supposed to be in the match. I read that they interrupted and got at it. So, and I liked them in the Wyatt family, and I enjoy him, the exalted one, or Brody Lee. Didn't really care for the Dark Order, but he's actually making it into a real group, and he added Anna Jay, Anna Jay and she, adding a woman, you know, as a woman of wrestling. Don't be biased. Well, I like that he, you know, he didn't just look into just men joining. He looked at women joining. They gave, he, he, he gave them the out for everybody. He you did. See, you see the pictures, like him and Natalia, mm-hmm. him and Tyson Kidd, who's been on the show a few times. Like, Brent Baker, everybody. everybody. He, he impacted every single he person. 
he was friends with everybody. You see these videos. Mm-hmm. It's just sometimes it's a it's a lot to take in. But um, yeah. here at RSH, the buzz, yep. working fans, whatever, prayers with their families, absolutely, internet people. If me and Chuck get out of line, put, try to put us back in our place. We got to do better. We got to be nicer to each other. We're all in it for the same reason. Maybe we don't watch the same shows, but there's no reason to be a dick about it. I'm gonna try my best in 2021. We'll see. But let's. So we got the negative out of the way. Let's go to something positive. positive. And we'll start with this. Big E won the Intercontinental Championship mm-hmm. in a fan. It was the best SmackDown of 2020. Absolutely. Yes. And it was the last one. Mm-hmm. It was four matches. All with great time. Couple cool backstage segments. Daniel Bryan's entering the Rumble, which we'll get to. Dave, this is actually the second time Big E's won. He pointed that out on Talking Smack. Hey, I won it. Maybe it didn't mean much back then, but I've won it twice. So, what's your thoughts on Big E winning the IC title? Is it finally time that this title is going to be relevant again? I think, uh, I hope so. Um, that's always hard to say. Uh, perfect. Um, <laughs> I saw that. Perfect uh, world. Uh, perfect world. I would really love, I've had this thought in my head, and it's probably just me thinking too positively, but I'd like to see Big E hold this belt, win the Rumble, and almost, you know, they throw away that title versus title match too easy. They I'd do. love to see with E built up, especially he's been strong, and Roman's been strong, Mania, the Intercontinental Champion. That's how you make it relevant. See, Dave got all choked up just thinking he about does. it. But yeah, while he comes back, um, that's something on social media that's been really popular right now is the fact that that unification title, especially with On Talking Smack last week, where Paul Heyman and him just – Paul kind of went after Big E. Dave's back. <laughs> Okay. Exactly. All right. To your point, do you think the fact that they actually laid the groundwork on Talking Smack, where Paul kind of went at Big E and was like, "Dude, you can be Roman Reigns," but he's like, "Consider this. If you think I'm full of shit, that's fine." But how many times, when Roman's in the ring, do they say, "Hey, that's Roman Reigns from the Shield"? He's like, right. "Every time you're out there, they're like, hey, that's Big E from the New Day." Mm-hmm. So that it's a pretty powerful statement and could be laying the groundwork to what you just said. Yeah, I'd love to see it. I think it would be. And make that belt mean something. And right now, the odds for Vegas are people are going to love and hate this. Big E is the number. There's three favorites Big E, Daniel Bryan, and Goldberg for the Royal Rumble winners right now. Not that G word. They're all three to one odds. As of right now, which we know that'll change, but it is a good sign that Big E is a favorite. He's a favorite, yeah. I I like Bryan. I, I mean, with the proper story, I wouldn't hate that. I'm more favorite for Big E because I think it's his time. Yeah. Uh, I do not want Goldberg. Not <laughs> that Goldberg. We don't like to well, say that. I'm talking I'm smack this week. They also plan a possible seed for Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns. So I don't know if they know where they're going. I haven't watched it, but I've read about what was said. So they're actually planning many different things. It looks like Bakley says the icy title. It has, and it's really sad. Sami oh, yeah. Zayn has done a fantastic job does. elevating yeah, that belt. I think, Sam, and they're going to fight again. I'm sure. It's Sammy will get a rematch, and Sammy needs to stay on TV. Just because he loses this belt, Sammy's fantastic television. He is. Yeah, I think right good. now he's one of the best on the mic there is, and he naturally fits his character very he, well. He's so entertaining and fun to watch how he acts. He's still throwing a fit still on SmackDown. <laughs> I want Big E versus Seth. Yeah. That's what I want. That's yeah. Seth's back this week. That's who I yeah, want to see. Yeah. Seth will be back Friday, which is a huge get back for SmackDown. You know, him and Becky, they, their baby's born now, so he can come back. You know, they're only working one day a week, so he can be at home, whatever kind of thing. That's what I want to see going forward, but I'm with you. I want him to win. As of right now, I'm picking him to win the Rumble. Yeah. Or I'm not, because I know Chuck's watching, and he's we're, we're going head-to-head for the RSH title. <laughs> Maybe I'm not picking Big E. Maybe I'm picking Charlotte. You don't we'll need to announce your picks, so Chuck. All right, Yvonne, what's your thoughts? I know a couple weeks, me and you and Chuck's been talking about Big E. We were talking about Sami Zayn being a great champion. We've also been talking about Big E winning the title. Finally, this is one thing we wanted to It was see. a topic for three weeks, should he win the title. Going we into were, 2021. We were wondering when that yeah. match would happen. We thought at TLC, but no. Yeah. Nope. We thought a couple weeks on SmackDown, no. Then this, granted, th- that was a better placement mm-hmm. for it. The end of the Ooh. year, good time yeah. to do it. Great start for us getting it right. Um, at least we got something right this we year. We did. <laughs> Big E, I can see him winning the Royal Rumble. I actually like to see him feud with Roman. Um, I think that's what everybody wants. 
It can be. I mean, obviously, I would. It would probably be for the title, but honestly, it to me, I don't care either way. To Dave's point, title versus title. Title versus that title automatically title. elevates the IC title, yeah. and that you're right, it gets thrown away a lot because normally the title versus title isn't even for the damn title. Yeah. It's just like the IC champ versus US champ. Yep. Yeah. And when they do the it's champion. on TV, and it's like, um, you know, it's like a quick disqualification or something. Yeah, like it's a double count out. Yeah. yeah, because they don't want to have one of them lose and look weak, which we've talked about in weeks past, mm-hmm. and they do that shit way too much. Yeah. But that's worth keeping an eye on. Big E, uh, this Friday, there's not much announced no, as of right now. There isn't. So it'll probably not be a very heavy show since it is, what is it, New, it'll be New Year's Day. Uh, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how they start it. But speaking of, Daniel Bryan backstage after beating Jey Uso in a, probably the best match of the night, honestly, mm-hmm. yeah. enters the Royal Rumble. He said, and he planted the seed. He's never won. It's something he wants to do. And as we know, his time is winding down. Dave, would you be okay with him winning the Rumble? And as I said, he's already a favorite. He's, uh, he's one of my favorites. Uh, I love that guy. Uh, he, his uh, win at WrestleMania 30, the whole yes movement, uh, one of my last probably favorite times in wrestling. Like, that I was really, yep. really... Uh, That's just, how you build a story. Mm-hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Because caught, caught up in the moment. Um, I, I remember watching uh, the night they did the Occupy Raw, and mm-hmm. uh, I had some... Uh, when we was a non-wrestling fan, I was giving it a background, and they were just engulfed. They were just totally in it. And I'm like, okay, this I know this is good, because if a non-wrestling fan is, like, soaking this up, then, you know, this is special. So I, I love Brian uh, with the proper story. I, again, it's Biggie's time, so Biggie's my guy. But with the proper story, I don't hate it. I mean, you could build it towards one of his last runs. You know, he wins the Rumble, and we'll go from there. You could always even do something where, you know, Brian comes close at Mania, doesn't quite, you know, pull it off. And then, you know, at SummerSlam, we're still building. You really want to put the Intercontinental title, you know, to backtrack a little bit yeah, special. Biggie mm-hmm. has that Intercontinental belt still at SummerSlam. And then we got, you know, Roman. And, I mean, mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff that could happen. I don't hate the idea of Brian uh, winning it. Uh, like, again, no, I, I really think it's Big E's time. I want Big E, though. Yeah. Bakley says, I remember when people went crazy that he wasn't in the Rumble of the year. And the one he got eliminated kind of quick. He did. Right. I remember because mm-hmm. Chuck wasn't even married yet. That's mm-hmm. how long ago it was. Because wow. I remember he was at my old apartment when I lived far away from here. Mm-hmm. And it was snowing and he had to leave early. Because he had to, you know, get home before the roads got piled with snow. And Daniel Bryan, like, we, we made it through 10 minutes of the Rumble, and Bryan was already gone. And the fans were losing their shit. Oh, yeah. I bet. Like, Daniel Bryan's <clears throat> always been over. If you think back when the NXT, before it was the NXT that we know now, when it was, like, pro, oh, yeah. and, and the Miz was his pro <clears throat> and all that shit. They loved him back then, too. He's yeah. always been the darling, because he was, like, that guy in the indies. He was the guy that broke the mold of, I'm the indie guy. Vince doesn't like me. I'm not six foot five with an eight pack and can bench 500 pounds. I'm just the best, one of the best wrestlers there is. And he broke the mold. And that's because of his work on screen with everything outside of wrestling. Other wrestlers that get mad you don't get pushed. Yeah. Use him as an example. Daniel Bryan had no reason to change anything nope. because he could have made it anywhere else the way he was. But he developed, he's better on the mic. He's, very, he's a lot more entertaining. The thing with him and Kane was hilarious. Oh, yeah. I actually have a Team Hug It Out shirt. Team Hell No, that's yeah, the name I have, I, a t- I have a, what's it, a Hug It Out shirt. It's white, it's got Kane and him. Well, they went to the therapy session and they completely lost it. So having a it character and a personality matters yeah. nowadays. And the storyline. Yeah, what's funny is uh, I'm saying, you know, that Yes movie was like my favorite thing. You're right, though. Team Hell No, mm-hmm. also one of my favorite moments. And even <laughs> they cut it short. When he started being a heel, and he was doing mm-hmm. the whole vegan thing, and he had to go. He was so fickle. good at it. I was like, this yeah. guy's amazing. His no st- I told Josh that the stupid words, fickle, he said it everywhere. And he's not wrong. wrong. Like When he's he describes not. wrestling fans, that's why they get so mad, because he's not yeah. wrong. That's why that gif you'll see everywhere, like fickle. Like, he's speaking <laughs> the truth, and people don't like it. Yeah, that's why you call him that. You okay with them winning, or do you want Big E to, too? I think Big E is going to be like the yeah. unanimous person for the next month this, that people want to see. This is what win. I love about the Rumble. You know, anybody can come and win this. You know, it could be Big E, John Morrison, Daniel Bryan. John Morrison's not winning the Royal Rumble. Well, it's just an example. Anybody can be entered and to win. That anybody surprised. Unless you're John Morrison. This is not going to be Goldberg. Um, I could see Daniel Bryan winning, but like we all agree, I think it's Big E's time. And I also think it's Big E's time to get away from the New Day. 
and be on his own. I know they're on different shows, but they accomplished enough as a team. I think Big E, I think New Day held Big E back. A little bit. They did, mm. because Big E is a star. He has potential, and now he's just now becoming a champion. That's so take, they, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Sorry. You're fine. It didn't take Kofi and Xavier. It took Kofi a long time. Well, it yeah. took him and Xavier a while, but they were Raw Tag Team Champions, and Big E didn't have any. That's fair. He never was really that champion. They kind of what, – what's that called where they could all defend it? I forget what that rule oh, is. Oh, the free bird rule? Yeah, the f- mm-hmm. yeah, that's right. You guys' first episode. I remember. Yeah. I always remember that because I thought you guys I was like, "Why are these wrestling guys talking about that damn song on their first show?" <laughs> and I was like, "Why is Chuck on there? He hates that fucking song." But whatever. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'd say. Um, other thing too is we haven't seen it a ton, but we do know Big E can talk because when yeah. he is yeah. given the mic, he runs with it and he's really good at it. So I yeah. think to see the serious side of Big E, too, with these promos, possibly, especially with Roman, who's been yeah. on another level with his promos, and that could be some really good stuff. Now, to the point, too, that, you know, for the first time in a while, if these are our top two choices, we really have two very good choices. Yes. You know, oh, yeah. the- There's also Goldberg. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that's a- <laughs> 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 the If it wasn't for Goldberg, we literally – are perfectly set up in the men's Royal Rumble this year. Uh, yeah. Because you also have Edge, who Edge I imagine right. will probably come back and eliminate Randy Orton, right? And then How that'll continue yeah. that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it should be fun. Um, Roman beat KO. I had that on here. We're not really going to. I feel, I think we probably all feel that KO gets Jay another shot at the Rumble and some yeah. other gimmick kind of match because Jay handcuffed him. And another fantastic match. Yeah, That's how you cool. open up a show, too. Yeah. You open it up with the steel cage. And it, it caught me off guard, but then when Big E won the title at the end, I was like, that's why that should have main event. Right. Mm-hmm. Speaking of world titles, Keith Lee, the battle of Keith Lee is apparently over. Over. Oh. Spoiler, he never was getting buried in the first place. Keith Lee <laughs> beat Sheamus in a, another very good match on Raw this week. Very physical. Yep. I don't know how Sheamus is walking up. He might be legit hurt. Some of those bumps that he took were really good. I rough. wouldn't be moving the next day after that. But this Keith ball. Lee versus Drew McIntyre next week, Dave. Two questions. One, how do you feel? We all felt that Sheamus, I think we talked last week, that Sheamus was next in line for this. So, mm-hmm. one, does Sheamus get involved in this and make it some kind of triple threat? And two, is there an actual chance that Keith Lee goes over? I like Keith Lee. I don't think it's his time. I don't think he will go over this way. I think when Keith Lee goes over, uh, at least in my world, it's going to be a Royal Rumble. It's going to be a WrestleMania. It's going to be something a little bigger. Um, I do think Sheamus gets involved. Um, I still think that now maybe it's going to be a three way at the Rumble. Maybe that'll be where this heads up. Um, you know, very physical style matches, like you said, with Sheamus and Lee. McIntyre will be right there, too. So I could see the three of these guys having really good chemistry if they do set yep. that up as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, Keith Lee's not getting buried, folks. Now, is he moving the way we would have liked him? Is everything going perfect? No, but that's not a burial either. Um, Bakley, and, dude, Bakley's ruining it. Watch Bron. Bron oh, watch no. Bron. God damn it, Bakley. It's like Goldberg, Bakley, damn it. It's like Goldberg ruining it. It's like he just ruined this. Like Bakley's like the new Goldberg. Yeah, Bakley is Goldberg. He just ruins everything. Because I'm imagining Sheamus, Drew, and Keith at Rumble. That's perfect. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Brian and Biggie went in the Rumble, but there's Goldberg and Braun Strowman. They just should fight each other again and, and leave everybody else alone. And yes. don't ruin it for nobody else. <laughs> I'm with you. He's not being buried. No. And I also feel like maybe some of our expectations for how fast Keith Lee should have been fast-tracked were unrealistic mm-hmm. as well. Chuck. Everybody wants – I get on to Chuck all the time, and he always mocks me, not everybody can be in the main event. But it's fucking true. Like, hey, Damian Preach should be in the main event. So should Shinsuke Nakamura. So should Chad Gable. It's like, mm-hmm. so let's have a 36-man tag match for the world championship with everybody that deserves to be pushed. It just doesn't work that way. Do they underutilize people? Sure. Was Keith Lee underutilized? I mean, he beat Randy Orton clean. He did. Yeah. Every time he, he lost a match outside the Miz and Morrison a few weeks ago, which was very odd, mm-hmm. he yeah. didn't get pinned. No, he didn't. Right. Like, he didn't take the pinfall. He even looked strong coming out of that Braun brief feud that he had. Mm-hmm. I don't I think, think Keith wins either. I'm with you. Here's how he wins, though. He wins. Bobby Lashley's going to be U.S. champ. Mm. 
Cedric and Benjamin still got those. Keith yeah. Lee's going. He'll join in the Hurt Business with the world that, title. He, he needs to. That would be good. I would be a fan of that. I think I mean, he's going to get sick yeah. of it. You, they were recruiting, right? Because, you know, Titus O'Neil tried to get in. Mm-hmm. And then who that, I forget who, who else that? pitched to get into it, and oh, they said no. Oh, then they attacked him. I think it was our truth. Drew like, Gulak no. also. Yeah, Drew Gulak tried he to get in. He got attacked to death. He had his little clip on time. But could you imagine him. that stable? Yeah. If you add Keith Lee, oh, and then you have possibly the Undisputed Era, we said it all year, but they're coming up at some damn point. They're going to run out of shit time. to do. Yeah, they are. There's a first feud. There's Babyface Heel. Yeah, then Keith that. Lee, you were one of us, and just build stories, and then mm-hmm. it branches out. That'd be awesome. But he's not winning this week. This is no. going to be a big rating kind of Raw, because you got the Legends coming. Yeah. It's Raw Legends or whatever Legends it's called. Night. Legends Night. Uh, you got Alexa Bliss, which we're about to get to. Can't wait. Uh, about trying that. to get caught on Ooh, fire. She's completely lost her mind. Right, <laughs> Yvonne. Does Keith win? No, I agree with both of you. It's not his time. Um, I like Dave said. I see Sheamus getting involved. He's coming. He's coming, and I think him and McIntyre eventually, slowly, him and McIntyre is going to have problems because you've seen it on Raw. You know, uh, McIntyre was talking to him and Lee and. Drew's like, I don't want you knocking him out. And then Sheamus kicked him. He almost hit McIntyre, too. That's what I think happens Monday. And I think like, Sheamus bro kicks key, uh, Drew. And it's an accident. And then he and goes, well, you won, bro. Because like, of me. And it's going to build into a story yeah. between him and Drew. Reports are that the plan is Brock, Keith, and Drew at WrestleMania. Oh. And that's going to build off of the Keith and, and Brock interaction at the Rumble from last oh, yeah. year. Mm-hmm. And obviously... Drew and Keith have it right now. How true is that? I don't know because there's also reports that WWE has never been this clueless on what their plans for Mania are, meaning they don't know what to do with Roman really yet. Nope. They don't know what to do with Bray. They don't really know what to do with Orton outside of Edge because they kind of want to – I don't know. They don't know what to do with any They don't know. No. Mm-hmm. Because I think the Women's Royal Rumble is going to be harder to predict than anything yeah, this year because I could see about. Charlotte winning it again just because the Oscar thing – it doesn't. You can. I mean, you could see it. Charlotte wins. Does she challenge her tag team partner or go after Sasha? Yeah, like, it could be anything. Yeah, that's that, dumb. That match is hard. I'll tell you my favorite part of Raw, and he retweeted me. Elias and AJ Styles, Dave. I texted Chuck, and I was like, Elias is fighting AJ Styles, and I've never been so excited to see AJ Styles fight. <laughs> Yeah. I'm probably the biggest Elias fan you'll ever meet. The your biggest life. I have ever. Every shirt that he's ever had, I have it. <coughs> Me and Chuck's the biggest AJ Styles fan. Me and Ivan went to Raw the time his first album got dropped. Oh yeah, where he got interrupted <laughs> seven, seven times. times. And he kept trying getting... to sing the song, <laughs> and bad. it was fantastic. Like he's, I feel like he's the most. I put it in my ten bold predictions you can find at whatthebuzz.com for 2021 that he's gonna. Finally, re- win his first singles title this year. I had it being the U.S. because he's on Raw. Yeah, but I think this guy needs pushed to the time. damn stars. He and does. this was a good. This was the best match of the week, and I, that's counting Uso and Brian, in my opinion. This match was great. Mm-hmm. This made Elias look fantastic. AJ Styles would fight this can of Coke over here and probably put on a three and a half star match. Oh, yeah. He would, yeah. unless you're Dave Meltzer and he'd give it a point five. He's the phenomenal, and that's what he does best. Though. It's good. It's a great start for him. I like the Jackson Riker pairing. It gives mm-hmm. him more depth as a character, and it also gives him time down the road when Riker helps him win, where he can just be a complete dick, turn on him, and turn Riker into something. Which a few months ago, Dave, we thought this guy was going to be future Endeavor after yeah. his political tweet, and then oh, the Forgotten yeah. Sons. Forgotten Sons. Chuck's not here, but he would say, "I forgot about those guys." But yeah, <laughs> like they were gone. <laughs> now they're part of Cor- Corbin's little clan or whatever. Oh, but, yeah, uh, I forgot what it's called. This was huge for Elias. He was on Talking Smack Talk, or not, uh, Raw Talk, I think is what it's called. Talking Raw, Raw Talk. Raw Talk. Talking Raw. about it. I don't know, Dave. I think this is a huge <laughs> sign that they have some confidence in Elias going forward. What do you think? I mean, they should. He's a great mic man. Uh, I think he's one of those guys that, despite the scripted promos, he delivers it in his own voice, which only tells me, too, that, like, <clears throat> man, this guy would probably be really good without a script. Like, he seems like one of yeah. those guys you can think, like, yeah. off the cuff really well. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and pairing you with AJ Styles, that's a great way to, you know, start over again a little hey, bit. that now, baby face turn. Starting AJ's fresh, yeah. starting to go baby face. So oh, that's going to be no, interesting, too. He really benefit from having the crowd back, too. Like, he's a guy that suffers without the crowd. I he does. Better they than both him. do really bad. Imagine Elias right now. Like, do you remember the Kevin Owens 
Elias Seattle thing mm. where they got booed for like five minutes. He's like, oh, the, the Seattle, how's your basketball team doing? And the crowd just went nuts because, as we know, Seattle left and went to OKC. Mm-hmm. So the dude can get real heat. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He knows how to get booed, too. And I have... Shut your mouth. Silence your cell phone. I'm a, I'm a huge Elias fan. Yvonne... You're, sitting, like, you're a big Styles fan. I was yes. so on Monday. As soon as they had, yes, too. They had that backstage segment, I was like, <laughs> time to stop prepping for your show. Pay attention to Raw. Because normally it's just background noise. But I was like, this has my full attention. I remember Chris, when J- Chris Jericho was in WWE, Elias was backstage, and Chris Jericho said, who are you? He goes, that's I'm Elias. Elias initially got yeah, over. Yeah, that's how he got. I like Elias, not as much as you do, but yeah, he retweeted. We want to thank Elias for retweeting us and liking my stuff on Twitter. That's he awesome. He did retweet, and he we did. got 50 followers. He's liked a couple Elias. of my stuff, too. We appreciate We're it. We're not talking about you right now. I said us, <laughs> RSH, me and you and John. And I want to see Elias go after the U.S. title. I think it's where he needs to start, and then he'll eventually get up there, and I don't know what's next for Styles. I think I Riddle, really don't. I think Riddle will take that strap from Lashley at some point. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yep. Because Lashley's not going to have it forever. Yeah. Lashley doesn't need it. He don't need even it. Even though he's being very protected booking-wise, which is good because I one of my predictions for this year is that I think we're going to get him and Brock at SummerSlam this That'd year. That would be a good match. Which is what's something else we've been wanting. That is one thing uh, that has happened. There are a few people, Roman, uh, Lashley. There's a few people that are being quietly very well protected. Like Roman at a point, too, right? He's not even taking like pinfall losses or being in unnecessary matches. And Lashley kind of the same thing. When we see him, mm-hmm. it's going to be a singles match usually, yep. or he's, yep. you know, if it's a tag match, he's getting the pin. You know, he doesn't get pinned, he doesn't nope. just lose. That's what MVP's there for, yep. right? Absolutely. Yeah, he's there to talk and take the fall if need be. Yep. He's he entered the Rumble Monday too. He did. He's he's, very, he can be a favorite. He can be a favorite of mine too. I ain't going to say nothing. Lashley yeah. is going to be the guy that eliminates like thirteen people, but then gets eliminated by somebody. He'll break a record of eliminating like he'll, people. He'll look he great. But somebody eliminate him to, like, further a feud or start one. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this segment. I don't. All right. So, Twitter. So, here, basically, to the oh people who haven't saw it, Alexa challenged Randy Orton technically to a match. She's mm-hmm. nuts. Which obviously got my attention because Alexa should get every person's attention, male or female. Oh, That's boy. how hot oh, she is. Then, mm-hmm. well, but, we know how you guys feel about it. But, but you know. How about her? Shh, I'm talking. The champ is talking. Oh, I'm <laughs> also a champ, too. So. The, the championship that matters. Anyway. <laughs> She pours gas on her head. Yes, Archie. We realize it was Archie texts me and says, yes, it's water. You can tell by the thickness. It's like, Archie, there's no time for logic in wrestling. It's still real for me, damn it. And then she asked Orton to set her on fire. And then it ends with the lights go off and Orton has the match, then boom. So I instantly get on Twitter just to see the reaction. Oh, my God, a cliffhanger. What the hell? We want to know what happened. Guess what, everybody? It's why the Young and the Restless and Bold and the Beautiful have been number one on daytime TV for the last 40 years. Cliffhangers every day of the week because guess what? Next Monday on Raw, you got a championship match. You have a bunch of legends coming back. Is Bray coming back? Is Alexa on fire? You have a lot of stuff. You're probably going to tune in next week. They're finally doing stuff they should because their ratings are absolute trash right now. Yeah. Great ending. Don't have any clue where this is going. Not a big fan. Of him tearing up the Firefly Funhouse. No. Fuck Orton. He needs to leave the rabbit alone. I know. And that's why he tore it up. I'm so sick of the rabbit getting killed and disrespected. First it's mm. in a blender. He just gets mild. Randy Orton needs to... Whatever. We'll see. The Fiend's coming back at some point. But this also leads to the fact that... What's the Fiend going to be reincarnated as? Is he just going to come back as the Fiend? Or does he come back with like... I think he comes back all burnt. Like his mask is burnt. Mm. He just comes back like... yeah. You you burned me alive, but I'm still alive, bitch. And then he chokes him out, and then it just leads to something else. Maybe he comes back as a... What did you think, Ron? Maybe he comes back as another, like, character, but more devious and... They need something. a character with an edge. Like, something like this, him getting burned. How do you really come back from that as a... I mean, I really kind of miss a lot more of his old... I, I think it was just because I watched that stuff with uh, Wyatt and S.H.I.E.L.D. today. I'm kind of mm-hmm. missing the old Bray Wyatt character a little bit right now, where he would... Talking yep. riddles a little more, so I don't know if that's coming back, but man, I, I do hope I mean, it could. Yeah, Bray reinvents himself. So because he, he did it for the swamp match, he did. Because like now, that's why I like this character. He can be Bray Wyatt, mm-hmm. Firefly Funhouse Bray, which I technically I guess that's what that name of that character is, unless it's just Bray Wyatt. The but fiend. then the Fiend, and then whatever this may be. Yep, there could be somebody else. 
And then Alexa just adds that dimension. I love how she's making jokes, too, about it. Like, oh, he got burnt. In her little playground. And I, I like how they've kind of... It's like a spinoff of a TV show. Like right. how... Uh, what's that Big Bang Theory? Now you have that young Sheldon show. Like, they spun off a of Firefly, gave Alexa's playground, which gives her character another layer. Yeah. And Bray's not... So you don't have to feature Bray on TV every week. You can have her do this kind of stuff with Randy, which furthers the storyline, and Bray still burn alive. Yeah, I don't yeah. see. I, I'm with Josh. I don't know where this is going. I think Alexa Bliss has lost her mind. Messing She's so with, hot. Messing <laughs> with Randy Orton out of anybody, a devious guy that he... There's words to describe Orton. He's everything, not evil, but he's devious. You don't want to mess with he's him. He's evil. He set my guy on fire. I, uh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I don't know where it's going. I don't either. No, that's the thing. That's what's so cool, because we have some comments. Um, and Orton's not afraid to set Well, Alexa's fire. the best Alexa. Damn you, AJ. Um, <laughs> not why I'm on screen. And what does this mean for Bray Wyatt himself? Because the Fiend version got burnt, but not him. That's the thing, basically. We don't know. Finally, yeah. Funhouse Bray can come in whenever he feels like it, that's a whole different character, but we haven't seen it yet. Nope. I mean, you just seen Randy Orton running around the uh, Firefly Funhouse. And destroying it. Your boy Joe, given the success of cinematic matches, yes, we will. I think we definitely will see more this year. I think my bold, it's not a, one of my bold predictions that I wrote about, but I've pitched to Chuck and Yvonne that Fiend, Edge, and Orton in a Firefly Funhouse match would be perfect. Mm. And they could really go back to the Gangrel brood days with Edge. Where sure. Bray can be like, yeah, you're this nice guy that had a career ending injury, Edge. You used to be me. Then they could. Flashback where Edge shows up like dressed in his brood outfit, and it's like just like John Cena. Yeah, you could use the same match, just Orton's had a terrible past. You could have him outside smoking cigarettes. You could have the uh, you could honestly pull yeah. up the WWE article where it says Randy Orton was suspended 90 days for violating the substance abuse policy. He was, and you could because that's what he did with John, he went all the way back to his past, yeah, and Brought him all the way back. He took a shot at the Bella Twin or Nikki thing not working. He the did. burials. Mm -hmm. The truth is what sells, and I think there will definitely will be cinematic matches. Dave, could what do you also think? get uh, Kristen involved too. I mean, you know, yeah. with his injuries, but he could be in a cinematic match and be involved in that too. And you could do something. I'm sure Gray and Girl would be happy to make a cameo. You know, you could do. Yeah, that. dude. I keep saying, yeah. Edge, you're a happily married man. I remember when you had sex in the rain. Yeah, I remember right. that. It's it's like, like, there's just layers. There's and layers. Past layers. Into. And that's what The Fiend mm. does. My bad, Aaron. I didn't mean to miss your comment. Do you think they could go Reigns, Rock this year? We've been they saying could. That too. They yeah. should. They should. But should. without a full stadium, I Rock. think Vince would wait. For the Rock. That's what I think, too. Yeah. And I think Rock is willing to do it, but I think right, because we won't have that full stadium. Yeah. I think that's it depends where we – this next month is going to be huge. With this vaccine, and they're trying to yeah. get fans at the Rumble. So uh, we're, we're, I don't know if they'll get there or not, but we'll see. Let's hope. Yeah, he went AWOL, Bakley. Uh, Chuck screamed that when it was completely silent at Raw, and Orton looked at him and shrugged his shoulders because they were sitting about six throw back. <laughs> Chuck actually got a brief AWOL chant started. I and wish Orton looked at me and did that. Chuck also got us blocked on Twitter by Xavier Woods. He also <laughs> screamed a lot of stuff in wrestling when we went solid. Right. Yeah. Enough about Alexa and them. For Let's once, get to. Alexa Bliss talk. I can go on all night. But I, I know you and Chuck both do. We, we have know. Tyler Peters, what's up, buddy? We got, the main line, hey, we got the main line at 7.30. We got game-winning drive at 9. We have to get stuff to get through and other shows to come on so we can't take up everybody's time. But before we get to the slammy reaction, me, Dave, and Yvonne are going to go through the biggest. There was like 85 awards that got given away. We're going to hit the big ones. <laughs> okay. Give our thoughts. But before then, check out where you can find the buzz on all of our social media, and we'll be right back. at wtb.com you can follow us there on all those platforms you can follow us at rsh wrestling follow dave at working fans podcast we're everywhere dude follow all of our stuff check out all of our great content yep. all right dave 
we're going to hit the biggest ones. Like I said, the Slammies, I have it pulled up here. There was actually 32 awards giving out, which is... That's a lot. Crazy. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's a bit much. That's a lot. So, um... For a Slammies. I'm going to actually delete a couple of these, like Ring Gear of the Year. Like, that's kind of... <laughs> I, I looked at some of this before we went on. I was, that's it's funny you said that. That's the one I got to too. I'm like, yeah. I'm not whatever. I was typing it. I was typing it in the banner the other day, and I was like, ah. some of these are silly, like Green Gear of the Year, Entertainer of yeah. the Year. I'll so let's get to the ones that, that aren't. That's crazy. There's a couple I think we'll be unanimous on, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll go ahead and get knocked those out. Return of the Year, winner was Edge. Mm-hmm. Nominees were Roman, MVP, Goldberg, and Sammy. I actually think MVP should have been second here. Yeah. I think he has a, had a very underappreciated comeback, and he's done a lot with the Hurt Business, and Goldberg should not be on any list. Exactly. For coming no, we're back. We're unanimous here. Uh, I'm a huge Edge fan, and I actually popped really hard back when we had fans in January, and he came yes. out of the Rumble because mm-hmm. I was not expecting that because I heard the rumors, but I'm like, Nah, he's not. We've heard bad. those for years. Yeah, and he did. I, I, yeah. Oh, man. I My buddy that. Phil sent me a Snapchat last night, and he was re-watching that. He's like, I can watch this a million times and give goosebumps every time. Yeah. Well, speaking of Edge, moment of the year. Undertaker's farewell, farewell actually won. Edge's return uh, was nominated. Drew winning the title. Becky's pregnancy. Roman and uh, Paul. Uniting, New Day splitting up, and Bailey betrays Banks. I think the last two really shouldn't have been here. They were kind of reaching. Yeah. I don't know why it's such a big moment that Bailey and Banks split for like the sixth time. Nobody's surprised and by that. New Day splitting up, we've seen coming. It's just a matter of when. Becky's pregnancy was, it's a heartwarming thing, you know, we're happy mm-hmm. for her. But it's a personal thing, basically. I would have picked Edge's return, yep, yep. Even, yep. especially <laughs> considering I think Undertaker will not be retired very long. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. uh, I think that's the thing, right, with Taker. You just never really know, and we never mm-hmm. thought we were getting Edge back. So for and Edge to come back, it was just huge. So our boy Benison from Armchair Wrestling and Stand Your Ground, if it's not Edge, you're wrong. I complete, We yeah. don't agree on much, yeah. Benison, but we agree on that. Absolutely. So another unanimous. So these are the couple that I thought that we would actually agree on. This is one, maybe not. Probably not. Female Superstar of the Year. Sasha won. Mm-hmm. Asuka, Bailey, Charlotte, and Becky was nominated. Yvonne, you're the woman's Ooh, wrestling yes. Insider, did they get it right? No. Who, Bailey, you say Charlotte, you're no, done. Charlotte wasn't. Charlotte wasn't even on TV. You're Bailey, done. I will literally kick you off this couch. I, <laughs> no, Charlotte was. Charlotte was injury. She was injured. Charlotte didn't deserve this. Or Becky. It was Bailey's moment. So it was Bailey. Bailey has been nothing but unstoppable. When ding she was, dong. Ding dong. She was a role model. <laughs> She deserved it more than Sasha did. Sasha's had a good year, yes, but Bailey has, since she's turned on Sasha, she's been unstoppable. She's won the title. She's kept it for, she broke a record holding it. And she's well, beat she everybody. And I'm second, Asuka, even though she uh, does not defend it, she's had a good run as Raw Women's Champion. You got to give her credit there for that. But no, it ain't Charlotte, I promise. So you got Bailey. Dave, yeah, I get Bailey. Yeah. Break the tie, gonna, unless you I'm have gonna, somebody else. I'm going to agree with I like Bailey. Bailey oh, was fine. my pick. I thought she had a great <laughs> year. Um, I think Sasha was right there. Uh, yeah, she, I gave it to Bailey ultimately because the longer reign in the beginning, um, mm-hmm. just everything she was doing and really turning that character around. Sasha's right there, too, because it takes two to tangle. Like that whole yeah. feud, it that is. tag team. Right, so... That's why I was, you know, like Sasha's like right next to me. And Asuka would be right just below those two. She didn't have as great a storylines to work with, but she That's was fair. doing what she could and carry on Raw. Um, you know, obviously the NXT women weren't involved in this in the beginning of the yeah, year. How do you gonna... feel about that? I was recording a podcast with my buddy Cy, pal. I'm not going to plug it because I'm a terrible uh, guest and I forgot what his uh, username on Twitter is. But we were t- I did an NXT review for the year. And he was like, what do you want to change in 2021? And I was like, I want them to be taken more seriously as a brand because I feel like their women's division is the best in professional wrestling. And it, sure. it's like NXT. And, like, I don't want to go de- any further down than my floor. Like, they're that much better to me. And I know mm-hmm. Impact, everybody says their women are there. So I'll believe people, yeah. Impact. And then there's WWE. And then way down there, unfortunately, right now is AEW. Mm-hmm. So – the fact that NXT is not involved in any of these, I think, is insulting and something that really needs to change in 2021. Because NXT, let me pitch you this. If NXT got put on Mondays in Raw's time slot, do you think it would get a better rating and over yes. the court? If you give it a month, 
you think it would get a better rating than Monday Night Raw? You got to give it time, but yeah, I think that's why that's I give it a month. Good. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I got that hot take too. I thought about that. I said a perfect world. Um, I wish Raw was on Wednesday. Or I do too. Honestly, I wish we had less shows. I wish we could just like enjoy. I'd like to see NXT on Monday, and I'd like to see Friday SmackDown. And it's not like I'm you know trying to take away shows. I just think there's so much content that yeah. if we could just have you know one less three-hour show in the week, and we had two two-hour shows, one to kick off at the beginning of the week and one in the end, and if they were distinctly different, like SmackDown and NXT would be, I think the product would be better for it. Yeah, NXT, my favorite show of the year, uh, easily. Best pay-per-view I had on there, but that's all we're talking about here. But I just wanted to pick your brain, because we talked about that earlier yeah. when we were recording, and I was like, if you swap those, mm-hmm. I think NXT would pop after a yeah. few it weeks. Was. When, after mm-hmm. the initial week of... P- because you remember when they took over SmackDown because they were stuck in Saudi? And you remember how great that SmackDown was? Yeah. I mean, all you really have to do, too, is there's a few big key name players on Raw. You move to NXT, so there's that name recognition, and fans mm-hmm. see that. But you mm-hmm. keep the way NXT is booked, and you keep a lot of the other young athletic talent there. Yeah. yeah. I think it's show. a perfect mix. Yeah. Vince has to stop getting in their way. Male Superstar of the Year, probably unanimous. Drew. One, uh, Roman, Orton, Bray, and Strowman. I'd have Drew first, Randy second, Bray third, Roman fourth, and Braun fifth. Roman wasn't around all year, which is why he's solo. Yes, I know he's been great the last four months, but he was gone for six months of the year. He was. But uh, any issues with Drew winning? No, you know, it's funny. I feel like sometimes I come out here and uh, every once in a while we'll go back and forth on something because I always like to have that little bit of like debate. <laughs> I don't have it right now. Yeah, we'll I get there. To Drew. You guys, Trust me, you we'll, guys will get there. We'll get there when I get to. Uh, I, yeah. it's like, I, I would almost go Roman because I just loved his character so much, but he didn't come back to around August. So because he took yeah. that time off and Drew was just steady the whole time, I had to give it to Drew. Yeah. You have issues with Drew? Well, sort of, but Drew deserved it. If you erased your biasness <laughs> for Randy Orton, do you have any issues with Drew? No, I have. It Drew deserves it. It's not I, Drew's I, fault. He kicked your guy's ass no, all he, year. You know, he has to win the title over and over. We know how good you are, dude. We understand. Yeah, I would have Drew, then Orton, and then Roman, and then The Fiend. That, that category is hard. I don't like The Fiend being nominated well, for that kind of shit. He shouldn't care. But anyway. That, that's true. Too. Breakout star of the year. Uh, Street Profits won, which I don't agree with the fact they're even in it because they're not one. They're wow. a tag team. Uh, Otis, Dominic, Bianca, and Murphy. I honestly would have gave this to Murphy. Okay. Mm. I I get why the Profits won, and they were fantastic yeah, this year, but they're not – they also won Tag Team of the Year, which is about to come up. Like, I don't right. understand why they had to win this one, too. They're not a star. Or maybe I'm just looking too much into the word star. Probably. Because it wouldn't have been Otis. Nope. Dominic was hot at the beginning. Yeah. And Ben hate, or Chuck hates Rey Mysterio and his family, and he even liked Dominic. Yep. Well, Bianca, she she's been good, but... She hasn't really been around she's doing nothing. Really. just been doing vignettes. Murphy put on a classic match with yeah. Roman at the beginning of the year on SmackDown, which yeah. was great. He had that feud with Seth where he was with Seth and not. He's kind of cooled off the last month. You know what's sad, Dave, is WWE has such, done such a bad job about developing stars. There really isn't one that stands out. No. This list is pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to agree with that. Um, that's what I thought, too. Like, I was going to kind of give it to Dominic just because he came out of nowhere. But it doesn't really, like, yeah, there's nobody like, really is a breakout mm. star. Let there. me, if I added NXT into this, who would be your, sure. how many nominees do you have then? Well, it's funny before you even said that, because I was thinking to myself, you know, if Bianca Belair was booked and like she was in NXT and having the matches she was, she yeah. would probably stand out more than me. Yeah, and uh, yeah, breakout star of the year. I mean, God, Ray Ripley comes to mind. Um, Their award shows now. Uh, I think they're doing it this week, some point. And I saw breakout star of the year, so I was like, Rhea, Gargano, yeah, Loomis, Priest. Cross, Priest. Priest. Yep. Which one? They all can Grimes. I mean, they all could yeah. win. All hard so, to choose from. Now you look yeah. at this list, and it's, it's like it's stupid. Honestly, it it'd probably be Bray. You know. <laughs> like, <laughs> If you included his run in NXT this year and the main roster, Keith Lee's right there because yeah. he won the yeah. North American and World Cup mm-hmm. at the same time this year. But then he got you know taken away to the main roster right away, and you know just hasn't been the immediate main event. Like you said, you can't all be in the main event. But yeah, I would say like mm-hmm. he would have stuck out for me as far as like just 
you know, all brands consider. Like he had one of those rib banging years. See, like Sami Zayn could have been in this, yeah. even though he missed some time. Um, Jay Uso. Jay, yeah. There you go. Jay Uso yeah. was a guy that was just a tag team specialist. And, and look then, what he's done with Roman. He could have won that. Yeah. For this, yeah, me and Joe had yeah. a disagreement about this because, uh, like, we talked on our show the other day. Uh, we were uh, doing a thing where, like, you know, like almost a stock market thing, uh, sell or buy. We we're talking about yeah. Jay Uso, and mm-hmm. I said I'm all in. Um, he said, because like the, the thing is, like, once the Roman storyline disappears, what happens? And Joe thinks, well, that's going to be it for him. But I think he's shown so much ability now on the mic and everything, mm-hmm. and he's held his own that no matter what, he's going to bounce back. And he's gonna well, Jimmy's back. coming back too. Yeah. And the rumors right. of Jacob Fatu going to WWE and joining that stable are hot <laughs> right now. Oh yeah. So me and Chuck might actually have to like take him up on his offer for that interview because mm-hmm. that'll be huge. Uh, an award that I think they actually should have. Also, not one, so we might not agree on yeah. this one either. I just no. I that. Now, this is how sad the tag team division has been because there's only two teams on this list that deserve it. Shayna and Nia Jack should not be on this list. They're not all. even a real The team. New Day, nope. r- respect them. They're one of the best ever, honestly. They're top 10 all time. There's a lot of great tag teams. Shinsuke and Cesaro should not be on this list. They're much better individual. Not together. But I think Bailey and Sasha should have won this as well. And the Street Profits. If they would have broke it down, male tag team of the year, I'd give it to Street Profits. But I think Bailey and Sasha should have won this as well. Oh boy! No arguments again. Damn it, Dave! I disagree with both of you on that one. Okay. From from now on, when you're on this show, we're gonna have a segment called "Damn It, Dave." I I agree. (laughs) Bailey and Sasha were a good tag team, but she hates Sasha. No, no, I don't hate her. Even though she has the gold Sasha jersey. I respect what she does. I just don't like her. You know, title. I just don't really care for her. She don't like the double champion I, thing. I had to vote for them because I, again, I said earlier, I thought at one point they were the hottest act in the company. You know, until Roman came back to kind of like mm-hmm. make that act really hot. Like I thought Bailey and Sasha together were just killing it. Yeah, I don't disagree. They were a good. There has to be something we disagree. They on. were a good team. <laughs> they were a good Cody team, segment, but I'm sure we no, would. Jesus, Jesus. They were a good team, but everybody knew. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey was going to turn on her. I mean, they were a great tag team. Don't get me wrong. They deserve the women's titles. But you look at the Street Profits. They're an actual team. Everybody knows they weren't breaking up. Everybody knew Sasha and Bailey was. So there was something there. Um, they were a great women's tag team. But Street Profits is an actual team, and they've they've been unstoppable since they've been. And they, they should have won that. By the way, back up just one second. I heard you say Chuck hates Rey Mysterio. I thought he was the only guy who hated Rey Mysterio, <laughs> so now I Oh, my God. He don't. This the, this the name he goes You up. don't want to go back and listen to RSH and we were just audio. <laughs> you just don't. You just don't. A uh, rivalry of the year. Okay. So another reason why Chuck hates Rey Mysterio. So yeah, he's not the one. <laughs> he Seth versus Rey Mysterio was nominee. Drew versus yeah. Orton. Sasha versus Bailey. Our truth versus the world. And Lana versus an outstanding. That shouldn't even be on the list. Also so shows how weak WWE was at voting rivalries over this year. Mm. I'm not. Who in the oh Orton? I mean, in the beginning of the year, I thought Edge and Orton had that fire, but it ended, you know, kind of prematurely with Edge's injury, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to actually give this to Drew and Randy Orton. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I would go, I would go Sasha and Bailey. Yeah, so, and I, 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 I see that on there. Yeah. I think I'm with these I'm two. With them. Yeah, Sasha and Bailey. When the pandemic hit, yep. the first two that came out on the first show without fans was Sasha and Bailey. Yeah. And the interaction with Michael Cole outside of Triple H being absolutely hilarious with the <laughs> yeah. uh, with the camera. He's like, shut up, Cole. I'm trying to get a good shot. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They they took advantage of this no fans thing and made it their own. They, they did, literally man. this year was the year of Sasha and Bailey. And the sure. sad thing is that they didn't take it all the way to many like we hoped, which Bailey could still win the Rumble. She's actually one of the favorites. Her and Belair right now are the two co favorites to win. Be, yeah. Obviously, Charlotte's second because why the hell wouldn't she be? She's Charlotte Flair. But I think they should have won this. Uh, Seth and Ray was probably the most overdone rivalry of the year. I get the R Truth thing, 24 7 title. I would have actually put it. Ahead of Seth and Ray because that one, the line of us announce tables is just the line of the announce tables is really that's stupid, and that's funny. that's that's a fill in spot, so you had to add something really stupid to make it. Well, Bakley thinks Owens and Rollins was very good early, but spanned over mm. both years. That's fair. And Black, Alistair Black, who's a guy we'll, we'll probably talk about in the, for the 2021 predictions, yeah, was pretty good with Seth until mm-hmm. he lost his eye, I guess, too. He did, <laughs> yeah, I, I know. 
I'm mad that moment of the year, Lana and Lashley's wedding wasn't nominated. Oh, darn, John. Mm. That was my favorite moment of the yeah, year. Yeah, I would have Sasha and Bailey. It was like the year for them. The All right. Rival. We'll disagree on this one because mine wasn't even nominated. So oh. match of the year. Mm, One I, yard I, match. I may disagree with this, too, God damn. maybe. Let me tell you something before we, I, I tell you about this. When I read this, because I read some of these beforehand, I'm like, yeah, I wish this is where I this is where I said I wish NXT was on this. Because yeah. <laughs> my match of the year would have been probably um uh O'Reilly and uh uh Finn Bauer. I thought yeah, see, they had an awesome match. Mine would have been the fight pit with oh, Thatcher and Riddle. Also very good. And even though I didn't watch a ton of NXT UK, I saw the Dragon Off Walter match. Walter, yeah. Another fa- fantastic match. Uh, yeah, I had NXT all over this one. Uh, yeah, but then Boneyard wins. Yep, they yeah. deserve it. Nominees, New Day vs. Hurt Business. Here's what's sad. I don't remember Lynch and Asuka at the Rumble. I just don't. I remember Brian and Styles. It was very good. I definitely remember Rones and Newstone in the I Quit. And they had yeah. Bailey and Sasha's Hell in the Cell match also was also nominated for that. Yeah, the Men's Rumble. Yep. Honestly, at this point, that's who I, that's what I would go with as being the best match. It was it the just, most fun. It accomplished so much stuff. Mm-hmm. Keith Lee got over. Drew exploded onto the scene. Chuck shut the hell up about Brock Lesnar for one night because he was so mad he was in the Rumble. And I was like, Brock makes stars. Yeah, he did. And he, w- and he did. Look at Drew now. Mm-hmm. But Boneyard won, Dave. Was it no. the right call? No. Um, I... I, I Wanted to give it to the Rumble. In the end, I leaned towards a one of my. I actually went with uh, Reigns Uso for the I Quit match. I thought they told a great story. It was. Um, you know, Edge Orton, the greatest match of all time there, which didn't win. Um, I yeah, the world's kind of funny, but greatest. That, yeah, GWME for everybody watching. The it. title was a little too much. It was a great greatest match. wrestling match. match ever, but it didn't yeah. fit in the banner. You have 200 characters. That you know, was we have too to, much. Can do. The words were too much. <laughs> I would have had Sasha and Bailey's Hell in a Cell win this yes. one. So now you have Sasha and Bailey winning. They're my favorite rivalry. You know, I don't like Sasha, but I like this rivalry. This 2020 has been their year. And yeah. they, their matches they put on together was amazing. You guys both missed it. It's not on the list, though, so I can't blame you. It was, it was on match, WWE. The Firefly Funhouse match is not nominated for match of the year. Uh, oh, it was cinematic, so it was Boneyard, and it won. True. Oh, that would be number two for me. You're right. I mean, which match could we get off? We could end RSH at 730. Watch it again. I could literally message you on Facebook and say, Dave, I have no fucking clue what I just watched. And it's been right. nine months since this <laughs> yeah. happened. <laughs> There's no other match. It's crazy because, you know, you have – I know you're a big Bret Hart guy. You can go back. Bret Hart classic. Oh, yeah. I, I've never watched something like this on WWE TV in my life. No. I got done, and I text Chuck, and Chuck said I need to go find drugs because <laughs> I probably, this is probably the only way I'll – I feel like I should be high <laughs> on something watching this. And I was like, so did I. I feel like I should be on acid or something tripping out because this match – it's not a match. No. But all the cool flashbacks, Saturday Night Live yeah. – Bray, using the genius that he is, fire, or going back to his Wyatt days. You can look, but you can't touch. It's such good shit. Like, yeah. I don't think people realize how big of a moment that was because Vince hates being mocked. Mm-hmm. We know Vince yeah. is an old man mm-hmm. who's he's a pissed off old guy all the time, right? That's the yeah. image yeah. that yeah. us as fans yeah. have in our head of Vince McMahon. You, you want to twitch? No twitch for you, bitch. <laughs> exactly. But the freedom that he gave them, actually, the best thing that came – of this pandemic, wrestling-wise, was the addition of these cinematic matches. Because we had two at Mania, AEW's done a couple, and they're they're fantastic. And we're probably going to get more and more. Like The Inferno match was great, too. And that was somewhat taped. Those uh, two cinematic matches saved Mania, I think, this year. They did. Yeah. I mean, it was nice that Drew had his moment, but you needed that plus the two cinematic matches. I'm not normally a fan of stuff like that. But they were so entertaining. Like you said, you couldn't really call it a match, but Bray and Cena were so entertaining. That whole thing was just mm-hmm. so well done. <laughs> I was just engulfed in it. I'm like, I don't know what this is, but I really liked it. <laughs> you know? And yeah, if Chuck was here, he goes, well, that's because you want John Cena. <laughs> kind of. Because <laughs> John Cena is my favorite of all time. all time. And Bray's my favorite now. So yeah. yeah, there's a lot of bias there. But there's also John Cena killed Bray's career technically at WrestleMania, which isn't all John's fault because he's not the one booking stuff. But right. the full circle story, and this actually kicked off The Fiend. 
But the fiend pointed at the sign, Chuck, nobody cares. You're the only one that remembers that, and I have to bring it up because you're not here, and I have to talk shit. I remember that, too. It ain't just Chuck. Yeah, but you don't talk shit about it. He does. (laughs) That's a good point. That's where we'll disagree. I got Firefly, WWE. I can't hate on the Boneyard, though. It was very good. Very good, Matt. Very good. So this caught me off guard. So if Sasha is the woman's superstar of the year and Drew's the men's, why do you need an overall? So how weird would have this been if, like, yeah, Bailey right. would have won this one. So right, this one was right. dumb. So I went with Drew as well. Mm-hmm. I uh, would have went with Norton. Don't you kind of have to? I would have yeah. went with Norton with this one. You have to go Drew or Sasha. You're contradicting yourself. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, and for me, right. I said Drew earlier, um, and I look at Bailey, and I, I would have to go Drew or Bailey personally um, as superstar. Hey, hey, what's if you were doing NXT Superstar of the Year? Who would you pick? Hmm. Uh, you know, it's uh, it was interesting because there was the injury bug a few times here. Yes. Yeah. Cross was on his way to be superstar yep. here, I think. Yeah. Uh, Keith Lee, first guy to win that North American title and NXT title at the same time. Uh, I kind of like him. If I had to go with just somebody who's currently right there right now, it's kind of crazy. I kind of feel like I almost want to go Io Shirai just because she's yeah. got the belt for this Yeah, time. I, I'm sure that too. Yeah. yeah. We came it's into like the was there, but he had the injury. So yeah. I'm kind of leaning towards you. Like on the podcast that I'll be on, I'll share it over all platforms. You guys, quit texting me. I'll share it. Trust me. <laughs> I will. But <laughs> the injury bug hurt him. Cross. Yeah. Uh, Keith Lee got taken away too soon to the main roster. Riddle got taken away because him and Pete mm-hmm. Dunne couldn't do anything because of the COVID. Pete Dunne was overseas. Yeah. Uh, Balor, O'Reilly, mm-hmm. Gargano got hurt. Choppa got hurt. Uh, Bobby Fish has been hurt, I think, 46 times this year because yeah. he's hurt again right now. Yep. Adam yeah. Cole got banged up. Broke Just in, every broke, time yeah. they did a huge angle, Bunch somebody got hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Candice LeRae got hurt, too. Mine mm-hmm. would, t- would honestly be Johnny Gargano. Mm-hmm. He's the heart of this show. Him and Ciampa should never leave. They should just be yeah. there forever. They're mainstays. And mm-hmm. damn, Dave, shit's getting stale. Guess what? Gargano and Chopper are back together. I mean, just like that. And boom, you're sold again because they were a fantastic tag team as well. Just think of their, yeah. Do you forget? Do you remember their, um, what the hell was it called? An empty building match or something where they just went to a warehouse earlier yeah. this year? That was great. And that led yeah. to the Karrion Cross debut where right. he mm-hmm. destroyed Chopper, which was a something that never happened. Chopper's the guy. Cross buried him. He did. Literally. He buried him. But that was yeah. the last uh, one of the last takeovers we had. I think I think the last takeover we had with, with Fancy. I think it was mm-hmm. out in Portland, right? And Cross yeah. just murdered him in that match. I remember that. Yeah. Like, oh. See, I think entrance of the year should have been a nominee. WWE dropped the ball there, and we know you need to would, replace stuff like that. Ring Gear the of fiend, the Year. The Fiend would win the entrance of the year. All right, Dave. So we got I got three questions for 2021. We're going to look forward and get out of this crap 2020 we've had. Yes. Mm. Who's your breakout star? For 2021 in the world of WWE, um, if we're including NXT, I think yes. this guy will probably make his main roster debut anyway at some point. I'm going to go with Cross. I think that guy's just money. If he stays injury free, he is just, and especially too um, with Scarlett, you know, the whole package. It's just yeah. it's you're ready money. for you're ready for Fiend and Alexa versus Scarlett and Cross at SummerSlam, aren't oh, you? Oh, that would be yeah. I didn't even think of that. That would be definitely something interesting. Yeah. The entrances alone. Could you imagine Scarlett on Alexa's playground? Oh, geez. Like I just think of the build. Yeah. yeah, I like it. I'm going Damian Priest. I think Vince is like slobbering in his office every time he watches NXT. He's like, Look at this guy. He's got a six pack. He looks like a rock star. And, he, and he's good. Let's yeah. team him up with Elias and have him be the lead singer. And he'd probably do something dumb. But Priest, <laughs> Priest, I think Priest is on his way up. I think Cross is going to mm-hmm. probably beat the shit out of him next week on New Year's Evil. And then he's going to disappear right. until Rumble. And then that's when he debuts. And I think Priest is actually going to be the guy that takes out Bobby Lashley in the Rumble. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing Ripley, though, uh, actually make it. Like, I, if Ripley came back and won the female, you know, the Women's Royal Rumble. And then mm-hmm. went on to Mania and corrected what should have got done last year and wins the mm-hmm. belt. I'd, I'd love for this to be her year. I'm a little more, I'm hoping, but I'm also like, you know, I'm hoping that. I don't know if that's what's going to actually happen. Mm-hmm. Whereas Cross, I feel it's just been handled so well. And mm-hmm. I think, like, Mike Vince was, like, you, like, you're right about Priest. When Vince sees Priest, I have a feeling he looks at Cross in a similar way. Like, okay, he does. He's like, guys. I found Bray Wyatt's new, new opponent. And he's not wrong. Yeah. Yvonne. Yeah. 
I would have Io Shirai. She's there we had, go. She's I was going to tell you. Great this. year. I was going to say, bring a woman into this because we've been the going heavy. Insider, absolutely. And I love NXT's women's mm. division. It's my favorite thing to talk about the women's division. Um, they have the best. Io Shirai's had a great year. Great year. She's beaten mm. everybody on that roster. Her and Kano. So, yeah, they, she's beaten with everybody. Her and Rhea, her going over Ripley shows that NXT is more invested in Io Shirai than Ripley. To Dave's point, Ripley's yep. on the way out. I think she's putting Raquel over next week in the last woman standing match. Mm. And she just put over, um, I forget. Dakota Kai? Yeah, Dakota Kai Dakota just got Kai. put over. She, she beat her, not clean, but she beat her. I think Ripley's on. Ripley right now would be my pick to win the Women's Royal Rumble. Mine too. She needs to get and in. And she, she should challenge uh, Sasha. Sasha, yep. Mm-hmm. It should be her and Bianca in my opinion. Anybody to go after Sasha, anybody. We had a category, too, where it was, like, breakout star of the year. We talked, like, every wrestling promotion. And a lot of people that I knew and were fans actually mentioned Raquel Gonzalez. Like, they think yeah. it's going to be her year. So we'll see. I like her. I, I believe that, too. I think she's yeah. going to beat Ripley tonight. Mm-hmm. All right, Dave. This is an interesting one. I'm actually changing this one up because I did a bold prediction that there's going to be numerous AEW superstars that actually go to WWE because right now the trend is I'm pissed off at WWE. I'm going to AEW. So let me ask you, because you're more of an AEW guy than I, than I am. Yvonne watches it weekly, but I do not. I do. Yep. Who do you think? The Give me a couple people that you mm. could see that leave AEW for WWE, because as I wrote in my article about it, that roster is stacked as well. There's a right. lot of people on that roster. For Right now, they only have AEW, Dark, and Dynamite. So who are some people you think could actually leave to go to WWE? Technically, she's not under contract, I don't believe, but performing on there, Thunder Rosa. Oh, uh, God. You imagine her in NXT. She'd be great. Hey. I'd love to see her in NXT. Uh, actually, I would say, even though I think uh, she's one of the people they've booked well, but I think I wouldn't be surprised because of her relationship with Adam Cole, Britt Baker, could see yeah. somebody down the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's funny. It's like the women's division is where they really need to kind of invest most of their time. Yes, they but do. the women is the people I could kind of see leaving the most mm-hmm. because – you know, you're in sure, that transition absolutely. period, and you're like, oh, here's NXT and WWE. You know, it's like, oh, want to jump on that. Um, so, yeah, Britt Baker, Thunder Rosa are the first two that really jump out of my mind. Um, you know, there's some undercard people that might, maybe a guy like uh, Lance Archer, who's a little bit bigger. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like he's not in that world title picture necessarily right now. He's somebody mm-hmm. I could see jump over. Um, Brian Cage has the look. I don't know if that guy could pass a wellness policy. That's what I was thinking. Exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, but I mean, those would be the guys I could see um, just because they'd have so much potential. I could see, like, you know, a big guy like that, Archer or Cage, jumping over. And other than that, the women, because unfortunately for AEW, they (laughs) are trying to build that women's division. And, you know, I I don't know when these contracts come up, but if, you know, if I was Britt Baker or Thunder Rosa, my contract came up, and I'd go, "Hey, you guys have interest? Okay, you know, I would jump on that mm-hmm. immediately." Absolutely, Yvonne. Yeah, I agree with everything Dave said, especially the AEW Women's Division. It's it's not real good. Um, if I had the opportunity, like Brent Baker, Nyla, just the whole women's division. How about that? Any of them? They all leave, and then they, they all, just do all. Well, the like you look at main ones, like Nyla Rose, the champion of AEW, however you say, Kushida, whatever her first name is. Mm-hmm. Um, Brett Baker, and then, I forget who else. That Serena girl that used to be in WWE. No, I, Serena Lee. Yeah. yeah, I could see her leaving. Mm-hmm. I could see her leaving. Cause I could was, see them getting pissed that the women's division is not that good and eventually just getting burnt out. But Britt makes no sense because of their relation to Cole. So I'll bring, Yeah. I think, Orange Cassidy. Yep, mm. Orange Cassidy. He, and here's why. They absolutely. ruined his push. They he did. beat Jericho. They put him over Jericho, and then he was on AEW Dark the next two two weeks. Mm-hmm. That makes zero sense. And he's now he's lost in the undercard somewhere feuding with Rusev, who had that <laughs> somebody broke his video game. So I think Orange yeah. Cassidy would be the guy. Tell me him and our truth ain't gold. Just tell me <laughs> yeah. they're not. Just tell me they're not. Hey, Jimmy, who's this guy? He puts his hands in his pockets. I mean, you can see, <laughs> I think Orange Cassidy and Trent Beretta are two guys that could go. Trent was obviously with WWE before. Mm-hmm. And I also think Lance Archer's a guy. Yeah. Now, his contract isn't up for a while, but Dave LaGreca was talking about this the other day, and I think MJF makes a ton of sense. If he wants oh. to get a negotiating war underway and for Vince to open up his pocketbook for a top heel mm-hmm. to go after a guy like Drew or a babyface Roman, which we know it'll come back to at some point, mm-hmm. 
I think MJF would be Vince's like if Vince oh, could yeah. go plug, grab one person, he'd probably take him. Mm. So that's that'd be my. Somebody else, him. I'm thinking of the Sammy Guevara too. We don't want him. No, we have no, to keep no, him away no, from Sasha no, Banks. No, it, no, oh well, God, no. I don't we have to keep him away from Sasha. Anyway, he, would, he would go on roll, not away from get away from her. Believe me. All right, Dave. <laughs> Male and superstars of the year. It's our last prediction for 2021. Hmm. Male superstar of the year. Like I said, Cross will be my breakout. Um. I'm going to go with the trend that we're continuing, that Roman's just had an awesome 2020. I think he's going to have an awesome 2021. You know what, though? It's Big E's time. Screw that. Big, Big, e? e's, Big E's going to be male superstar of the year. Female superstar of the year. I think Ripley's going up. I think Ripley makes a splash this year. I'm going to go with Ripley. Yvonne. Can it be from any show or just any NXT? Day? NXT, all okay. three. If you think, okay. good, but they have to be called up because we're still Call technically not counting okay. NXT as a third brand for some reason. All right, I would have Damian Priest for male, female. God, that's hard. I would like to see Ripley win that. Or well, Ripley's going to be a popular one for that. Or Candice LeRae between her and Ripley. If if Gargano, so like. If Gargano doesn't leave NXT, I don't want her to either. I, think I don't want to see together. them, but Candice is, so, is so great act. Candice is so fucking good. How can you not bring her the up? Power couple, yeah. yeah. Um, that Christmas tree, they, they, the Christmas that last year was just so great. I thought they're making Austin Theory entertaining too. Like I really enjoyed yeah. the whole interaction. He looked like a complete goof and indie. I'm going to be boring with my women. I think it's going to be Becky. I think Becky's going to come back like a bat out of hell and kick everybody's ass and take back what she never lost. And that's your storyline right there. I never lost this belt. I had a kid. I, I'm the mom, and I'm going to beat your ass and make you my kid. I can already see the promos now, so I think it'll be Becky. Mayo is really, really difficult. Yeah. There's so many. Like, if Cross gets called up, Damian Priest, mm-hmm. oh. hell. Then you have the people like Keith Lee, Riddle, Jey Uso. On the trend that he's on right now, I'm gonna go with KO. Oh, I think okay. they gotta capitalize off this guy. If they don't realize in the last month or two that this guy's money, and yeah. if you go back to when he teamed up with Jericho briefly and did that whole festival of friendship, which I have yeah. the action figure set in my he room, does, he does. it cost sixty five dollars. <laughs> you paid that much for that? You got was it worth it? No. I did, but it was so good. <laughs> I actually almost bought the painting for three thousand <laughs> off of Amazon of. Uh, you remember the painting where he's floating and he's oh, yeah. reaching out? Three grand. I got that kind of money, bro. But um, you spend that on KO and stuff. And Becky Lynch. Mm, I'd love, love to see KO. Yeah. And that you know, he, he how good has he been in the last month though? Yeah, he. I wanted him. It's funny because I I've been putting over Roman so much because I really have enjoyed his run, but I kind of wanted Owens to win on Christmas because I was like, is this such a great? Under like you know underneath fighting baby face, it's like mm-hmm. he really put over that fact that like he's not going to back down, he's not going to give up no matter what. It's a classic, easy story to tell, but he just personifies it. And hey, he doesn't look like every other. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. just like kind of mm-hmm. portly looking guy, but he's athletic and he's tough and he's going to like beat your ass. I love it, dude. Yeah, a lot of good stuff. Hopefully, head for twenty twenty one. But before we wrap up. Short week, you have um, right after this, the main line at 7.30, and then you have game-winning drive tonight at 9, but this is the rest of our normal lineup, which will be back live at you starting next week after the new year. Check it out when I find it. There we go. Tell them that's what we're ready for. Tell them that's what we're ready for. Bringing that to competitors. Do we see the confetti fall? Be ready for Tell them that's what we ready for. Whoa. Tell them that's what we ready for. Whoa. Bringing that to competitors. Do we see the confetti ball? Be ready for Whoa. Tell them I'm ready in the opponent. The crown heavy and every minute it's chosen. A path only fit for kings. And you don't know what this court means. What did you win this for? If it isn't getting more rings, then you're going to have to switch your team. Uh. Trust me, it gets more mean. I'm a nightmare going up against your dreams. First step is explosive like a bomb hit. Bet if I let it fly, I cannot miss. And you ain't got a chance at the top 10 when you getting clamped all night by your locksmith. On the block, throwing lobs to my top bigs. I'm a chef, no look with the top dish. Tie game through the pressure as the clock ticks. Cross over, step back, hit a shot, switch. Whoa. Tell them that's what we ready for. Whoa. Tell them that's what we ready for. Whoa. Bringing that to 
competitors Do we see the confetti ball be ready for war? This is how champions are made, but it never happens in a day. Yes, sir. That's our lineup. Yep. Uh, Dave, really appreciate you yep. filling in. Yep. Hit him up this morning. You were more than willing to help out. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it. You keep this up. We're going to trade Chuck and a player to be named later to the working <laughs> fans to bring you over to this side. All right. I mean, uh, I'm going to negotiate. I'm always open. All right? uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not negotiating with AJ, though. <laughs> he, I feel like he'd be he'd be trying to negotiate New York Jets wins, and that's just not going to happen. So that's, yeah. we can't do that. He's uh, he's loyal to his team. I'll give him that. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. Before we go, tell everybody where to find you guys at. Ah, uh, yeah, the uh, Working Fans Podcast. Um, we're available on iTunes, Spotify, all major podcast platforms. Uh, we drop Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, we're at Working Fans Pod on Twitter. And uh, we just have a Working Fans Podcast page on Inst- I'm sorry, on Facebook. And uh, I think I Joe's got the Instagram on lock. I don't know what the Instagram is. So, sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> RSH, at RSH Wrestling, Twitter, regularly scheduled hostilities on Facebook. We don't mess with Instagram because it gives us a headache. <laughs> and follow What the Buzz at WTV.com on Twitter, Facebook. Or on Instagram. On Instagram, yep. Uh, we're everywhere. Facebook, every every platform of social media that there is, we are there. Yep. Keep it locked here, 15 minutes away from the main line. 15 minutes, yep. I'm Josh. It's Yvonne. This is yep. Dave. Like I said, Dave, appreciate Thanks you filling in. Dave. Everybody appreciate have it. a safe, happy new year. Wear, don't be an ass. Wear your mask, and we will see you in 2021. Yep. And I'm going to try to impersonate Chuck. And if you don't, fear Regularly scheduled hostilities. It doesn't sound the same. No, it doesn't. Happy New Year, everybody. We will see you next year.